live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Informatica World 2018. Brought to you by Informatica. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage of Informatica World 2018. We're here at the Venetian in Las Vegas Live. I'm John Furrier, your co-host with Peter Burris, co-hosting and head of analysts at Wikibon and Silicon Angle theCUBE. Our next guest is Sham Dadala, who's the Enterprise Analytics Architecture Engineer at Sire Pharmaceutical and Sung Nam, Director of the Enterprise Analytics Solutions Lead at Sire as well. Great to have you guys, thanks for joining us. Thanks, thanks for being here. here. So I love getting the practitioner view of kind of the reality, right? of what's going on, obviously Informatica is their show, you guys are a customer, you're looking at some of their products. Um, take a minute first to talk about what you guys do first. See Pharma, you got some stuff going on, data's involved, privacy's involved, <laughs> you're in Europe, in the US, GDPR's here. Take a minute to talk about what you guys do. Sure. So Shar Pharmaceuticals is uh, the global leader in rare diseases. So um, there's about 350 million patients who are affected with rare diseases today, and so our group um, is within IT, uh, Enterprise Analytics, so we're focused on making sure we bring the right technologies and capabilities around BI and analytics to the organization. So um, we look at products, tools, figure out how they fit into our, our ecosystem of BI stack of tools and make that available to our, our IT colleagues as well as our business colleagues. So rare disease, can you just explain kind of categorically what that is? Because I'm assuming this just rare is not a lot of data on it, or there's data you got to figure out. What is that, how do you guys categorize that? Um, so rare disease, you know, ma majority of the rare disease are affected by, affected the children. So that's a, a kind of a critical aspect of what we do. Um, you know, rare disease could be in immunology, it could be in oncology, GI, I mean there's, rare disease is typically, um, you know, people who are affect, affected probably less than a thousand or two, a couple thousand. I think one of our drugs, um, the, the, the population is around 5,000 people. And but these are chronic diseases. Yes. Typically they're chronic diseases. So they're, they're, they're diseases that affect the quality of life of an individual. So what you guys are doing is identifying what is it about the genealogy, et cetera, you know, the genome associated with the disease, but then providing treatments that will allow, especially kids, an opportunity to have, live a better life over an extended period of time. Yep. Yeah. And what do you guys do there in terms of the data side? Can you explain what your roles are? Yeah, so like I said, we are in the enterprise analytics, so we're focused on bringing um, technologies and capabilities around BI and analytics spaces. So you know, how do we bring data in, and ingest it, how do we curate the data? How do we um, do data visualizations? How do we do data discovery? Um, advanced analytics? So all of those kind of capabilities um, we're responsible for. So what's your architecture today? You have some on-premise, is there cloud involved? Can you just kind of lay out kind of the environment as much as you can share? I know maybe some confidential information, but for the most part, what's the current landscape internally for you guys? What are you dealing with for data? Sure, so we built out a new, um, a new next generation analytics, we called it our marketplace, our analytics marketplace. Um, we're leveraging both on-prem as well as cloud technologies. So we're leveraging uh, Microsoft Azure, um, the HD insights for Hadoop, the big data technologies, um, as well as Informatica for data ingestion and bringing that data and transforming, transforming it. So there are many tools involved in that one. So it's like the whole ecosystem we call it as marketplace, which is backbone for shared enterprise analytics strategy and future. Do you guys put a policy around what tools people can bring to work, so to speak? And we're seeing a, 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 a proliferation of tools. I mean, there's a tool vendor everywhere. Or we look around the big data. It's, I got a tool for this, I got a tool for wrangling. I've seen everything. How do you guys deal with that onslaught of tools coming in? Do you guys look at it more from a platform perspective? How are you guys handling that? Right, so we've got a platform perspective. You know, we try to bring tools in and make that a standard within the organization. Um, we look at you know, security, is it enterprise grade technology? And um, yeah, it's a challenge. I mean, there's you people do the, who- You do basically certify it. You kick the tires, give it a pace, test right. through its paces. Right. And then we have our own operations team so we can support that, that tool set. Um, the platform itself, so people And what do your customers do with the data? Are they doing self-service? Are they data scientists? Are they like just business um, analysts? What's the profile of the users of your, and customers of your? We have all set of users. We have like uh, technical folks which they want to use the data like traditional ETL, reality. So there are folks 
from the business they want to do like self serve and analyst they want to do analysis on the data so we have all the capabilities in our marketplace so some tools they enable those guys to get the data for the self serve like the tools we have and uh, developer does their own stuff like the ELT talk a little bit about the one of the key challenges associated with pharmaceuticals especially in the types of rare disease chronic young people types of things that you guys are mainly focused on. A big challenge has always been that people, when they start taking a drug that can significantly improve their lives, they start to feel better. And when they start to feel better, they stop taking it. So how are you, are you using big data to, or are you using analytics to identify people, help describe potential treatments for them, help keep them on the regimen? Uh, how do you do, are you, first of all, are you doing those things, and as you do it, how are you ensuring that you are compliant with basic ethical and privacy laws? And what types of tools are you using to do that? It's a big question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so we are doing some of that. Um, you know, we have looked at things around persistence and adherence and understanding kind of, um, you know, what, what combination of drugs may work best for certain individuals or, you know, groups of people. Um, yeah, and definitely, you know, um, compliance is a big factor in that. So, you know, working closely with the compliance group, understanding how we're allowed to use that data, you know, between which parts of the organization. Do you anticipate that you'll have a direct relationship with some of these customers, or is there an, op it's, in other words, does analytics provide you an opportunity to start to alter the way that you engage the core users of your products and services? Um, I, I believe so. You know, I think one thing that we're looking at from a strategic standpoint is um, how do we diagnose people sooner? A lot of these chronic diseases, um, you know, they go through two, three years of undiagnosis. So they'll jump around from you know, doctor to doctor trying to understand what, right. you know, what the issue is. So you know, I think one thing we're looking at is how do we use data and AI to, to more quickly be able to um, diagnose patients. Yeah. Has a 360 view helped you guys? of data, you guys have a 360 view. How do you, because most people look at that as in terms of a channel, selling a product and serving customers, you have a different perspective. What's the 360 view benefit that you guys are getting? Yeah, so we have a, a kind of a customer care model, which is kind of a 360 for around our customers. So understanding, um, you know, around just drug manufacturing to making sure they have the right, you know, they have the right supply to understanding is it working for the patients. So we've always been talking about the role of big data. You mentioned Hadoop, that Hadoop was supposed to be this whole industry. Now it's a feature of, of data, right? So there's a variety of uh, you know, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, some say IPaaS and big data. How are you guys looking at that as, uh, as, as builders of IT, next generation IT, the role of uh, IPaaS and big data? Um, we see it as a role enabler. You know, I think the, what cloud brings us in the PaaS type solutions is agility. Um, you know, we, as you know, the, the market is so evolving so quickly, and there's new versions of new software coming out so quickly that you know, we want to be able to embrace that and leverage that. Give it a benefit of like, uh, give it some sort of a comparison. Old way versus cloud, like, has there been some immediate benefits that just pop out? Yeah, there are a lot more benefits with uh, doing the old way and the cloud way, because with the cloud, it brings a lot more uh, scalability. In, in, in olden days, to get like, a, 10 servers, you need to work with the uh, infrastructure team to get it like, it takes three months or two months to get it. With the cloud, based on your workload, you can scale up or scale down. So that's uh, one thing, because it's, you're talking about big data. Yeah. You're, you're getting, the volume of data you're getting, you need to scale up your uh, storage or your Yeah, you need platform. compute, you yeah. need either jam on some compute, bring yeah. that to the table, and then you got to have the custom tooling for the visualization, yeah. all that kind of together, right? Yeah. Talk about, the, um, the, from your perspective, the, um, the balance that you have to guys have to deal with every day. Like you got to deal with the current situation in IT. You got cloud, you got analytics, you got customers, personas of, of people using the product. But you got to stay in the cutting edge of like what's next. Because if you're going down the cloud road, you're looking at containers, Kubernetes, service meshes. You know a lot more stuff coming down the pike, if you will, coming down the road for you guys. How are you guys looking at that, and how are you managing it? Do you have some greenfield projects? Do you do a little, you know, R and D? Do you integrate it in? How are you dealing with this new? Uh, cloud native set of technologies. Yeah, it's definitely a balancing act. You know, I think um, 
We do a lot of POCs, and we actually work with our business and IT counterparts to see, hey, if there's a new use case that, are, that is coming down, you know, how do we solve that use case with some of the newer technologies? And we try a POC, and we bring in a product to just see if it works, and then see how do we then, do we then take that to the enterprise. So I got one final question for you guys, and maybe you do as well, John, but, but in life and death businesses, like pharmaceuticals is a life and death business. The quality of the data is really, really important. Getting it wrong has major implications. The fidelity of the system is really crucial. You say you're using Informatica, for, for example, in Jest and other types of services. How has that choice made the business feel more certain about the quality of their data that you're using in your analytic systems? I think the standardization, so, you know, inf between MDM, around mastering the data, to ingesting data, transforming the data, just having that data lineage, having that um, standard around how that data gets transformed. Um, is that fundamentally a feature of the services that you're providing, is you not only be, you know, uh, the ability to do uh, a visualization on data, but actually providing your scientists and your business people and your legal staff explicit knowledge about where this data came from and how trustworthy it is and whether they should be making these kind of very complex, very real, hardcore human level decisions on? Is that, yeah. is that yeah. all helping? Yeah, absolutely. Because it seems like it would be a really crucial determination of what tools you guys would use. Right, it is, yeah, and absolutely. I think also as we move more towards self-service and having these people, having data scientists do their things on their own, um, being able to have the tools that can do that kind of audit and data lineage is, is crucial. Yeah. Great to have you guys on, we got to wrap, but I want to ask one more question. I heard you guys were an innovation awardee, Informatica, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, any advice for your peers out there who want to unleash the power of data and be on the cutting edge and potentially be an honoree? Um, yeah, I would say just definitely think outside the box, you know, try yeah. new things, try POC, you know, do POCs. There's so much new technologies coming down so quickly that it's hard to keep up. Jam, it's like a moving target, you need to Chase your moving target and based on POC that gets you like what you wanted to do. Keep it exciting. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Get out front. Don't keep your eye on the prize. Yeah. Focus on task at hand. Yeah. Uh, bring in the new technologies. Guys, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. Great to hear the practitioners' uh, reality from the trenches, certainly front lines. You know, life or death situation, the quality of the data matters, scaling is important. It's the cloud era of, uh, of data. I'm John Furrier. Peter Burris, more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>